Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to worship this morning. In a way of announcements, today is a communion Sunday, and our communion offering is going towards VBS. Uh, if you are giving online, you can give to gnj.org slash online giving. But if you're here, the plate is as usual in the back, and the communion plate offering is to my left, I guess your right, when you come in. We're starting a new sermon series next week. Uh, it's called A New Normal. The four-week series reminds us that God is with us in this disorienting, culture-shifting situation, whether it's a pandemic or a new life stage by choice or a sudden change by chance. We're also having this month our Kids Night at Home Staycation VBS. That's August 20th. will be posted on Facebook and YouTube, 7 p.m., if everything goes right with it. And uh, today, you're supposed to register by today so we can get the kits to you. So let Julie know or message me if you are interested. We have eight now. We have eight registered. Great. Is there any other announcements that should be made? Okay, well, let's go to God in prayer this morning. Dear God, we ask you that you fill us with your spirit of love and unity among believers across all this nation and all nations. We ask for your help to set aside our differences and look to the greater cause, the cause of Christ. We ask that you help us to truly live a life of love and justice. We know that this is only possible through the power of your spirit. So we pray for your spirit to move across our land in new and fresh ways. Turn your people back to you. Draw others to come to know you. And we thank you that you're always with us to give us purpose and hope. Amen. Our Psalter reading today is Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3. Behold how good and pleasant it is when we live together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded his blessing, his life forevermore. Our first hymn is number 622, There's a Fountain Filled with Blood. The sing in the first and the last.
It's time to share our joys and our concerns. So what is on your heart this morning? Yes, Charlie. I have a concern for my son, Kenny. Okay. He's been fighting cellulosis in one leg, and it's, it's come back in that leg, plus it's in both legs now. Wow. Okay. Very much deep up first. Yes. So that's Kenny. He has cellulitis in both his legs. I can tell you that's not fun. I had it in one. That was enough to... He even has wounds in the bed. Right. Right. So that's Kenny. Yes. I was told this week uh, about Penny Moore. She's in rehab. She has cellulitis, but it has gone to the bone. Yeah. Yeah, she gave me the specific name for her, but it was one of them long medical turns, but yes, the infection. Yes, so it has went from the foot into the bone, and she's halfway through the antibiotics that she's given her, the last round of antibiotics. Definitely. But she's also in rehab. I forgot that. Yes, really. My friend George that I talked about last week, yes. he was basically going to go have a meeting to decide whether they were going to turn things off and let him go. And like a hour before they were supposed to have that meeting, he opened his eyes. Right. And he's not talking or anything like that, but he is responding. So he's definitely responding to everybody's prayers. Well, that's definitely an answer for the prayer for George. Pray for continued healing for him. Yes, Judy. Our very long trip went without issue. We were just safe and healthy. And everyone was super excited to be back. And we're super excited. Uh, the children, it's almost like they knew we were almost here. The last hour was chaos. <laughs> no. So definitely we're thanking God that the move, the tr getting here was not as stressful as it could have been. So that was from Texas to New Jersey. And it's definitely much quicker than we thought it was going to be. I'm assuming because there's less traffic right, right now. Um, when we went there, it was 38 hours. Coming back, it was 31, including stops. Wow. So, so definitely thanking God for that. Easy moving. Well, I do have our list of prayers, but I will get Jenny's first. Okay. 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 Yeah, it's hard with people in the nursing home. They don't let you visit. So for some people are trying to, I guess, can visit sometimes through a window, but if that doesn't always work out for everybody if they're not mobile. So, yes. Anybody else? Well, I do have the prayers that we've been praying for, um, and I'll go through them. For our uh, school situation, for the administrators, for parents making decisions and teachers, and for the students, for those that have the virus and are recovering, for the virus to end. Uh, for those that have cancer, we mentioned Mike, but also Perry Ashman, Sherry Fisher Riley, and for Helen. Those from our church here, Fairton, the Blues, the Johnsons, Miss Mary, Mrs. Lanning, Reds, and Bev. For frontline and essential workers, healthcare workers, for our police, our firefighters, for Renee, who has had to switch meds. Uh, for Kay, we mentioned she's in rehab and uh, has needs healing for her foot. For Jody, for healthy pregnancy. And for the move that's still, still unloading boxes and things. So 
We pray for that. For Hope Edwards and Guy Vespada for continued healing. For Jimmy Orr, he's consulting with a surgeon and a pain management for his back and also needs direction on a new source of employment uh, because he can't do floors anymore. Uh, there's an LAC resident who is still missing, Jeremiah Bowman. For Mike, who has liver issues. Uh, for Nick, who has a fractured ankle. For our Vacation Bible School, everything goes okay, recording, and, and for the children to uh, just participate. For our churches, our pastors, for Terry, she works at a nursing home in Genesis. She has for prayer. For Aaron, who has stage five kidney failure and he's lost like a toe. He has a lot of health issues, concerned. He has diabetes as well. For Todd Hickman, he lost his memory, some of his memory after having a seizure. For Stephanie, who's uh, trying to get unemployment and still hasn't been able to get, through, get it. She's been uh, over a month without any income. For Jen, that's my best friend Jen, it's her birthday today, so happy birthday if you're watching. But for encouragement for her, Yvonne for strength. Uh, we mentioned George uh, for more progress, but we're thanking God for him waking up. For the family of Lillian Carter, she's a dividing creek split ditch resident. Uh, she passed away this week. We also want to lift up the Fogg family who lost a relative from Georgia. Betty found out she needs knee replacement. And we mentioned Kenny has cellulitis in both his legs and for those that are nursing home and in the manor especially, and unspoken requests. Is there anybody else? Yes, Charlie. I visited with Richard and Alice yesterday. I don't know anybody aware of it, but they have great grandparents once they came to a baby girl. Okay. Yes, when I was there visiting, I guess that was last month, I brought communion to them. Visited for like five hours. I didn't realize, I didn't have my phone out, so I didn't know it was five hours. We just sat there and talked and talked, but that was one of the things they were excited about. Another great grandchild, I believe. It was a great grandchild? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think the name is Okay. Okay. All right, let's go to God in prayer this morning. Lord, we come to you with many requests, and we thank you that you are a God that listens when we, we come to you, that we can come to you with our joys as well as our concerns. So we thank you that Jody had an easier move, and I pray that the rest of the move, getting out of boxes and adjusting to being back in old stinky Jersey, is, is does well. We want to lift up... Uh, those that have the virus and those that are recovering, still recovering, I ask for healing for them. I pray for that a vaccine would be found uh, as soon as possible. I want to lift up those that have cancer, for Perry Ashman, for Mike, who just went through another round of chemo, for Sherry Fisher Riley, and for Helen. Lord, we lift up all of our schools and our administrators, our parents, and these students that especially for the parents that are making decisions on how to address the new school year. Give them comfort on whatever decision they make that's right for them. Also, we'll lift up those from our church that we regularly remember, the Blues, and we're thankful that they have this new great-grandchild that's a blessing, and it's a reminder that the new life is always around us, and there's always goodness around us if we look around. We also lift up the Johnsons, especially Mrs. Johnson, who wants to have a good rest. We also lift up Miss Mary, Mrs. Lanning, Reds, and Bev. Lord, I ask that you would just bless these dear folk that are dear to my heart, that you would give them your love and your peace and your comfort. We lift up frontline and essential people to you because we know they're still dealing with the public public is tired of wearing masks and it's hot and they're dealing with grumpy people all the time. So give them an extra sense of your patience and give them, keep them safe. We also ask that you would be with the healthcare workers, uh, nurses, doctors, EMT, paramedics, especially those that are, are taking care of COVID patients, that you would keep them safe. Also be with our police and our firefighters as they go forward and help protect us and help 
uh, save us when we're in trouble, protect them as well. We pray for Renee, who's had to switch meds, and I ask that, that it would be a good transition for her. We looked up Katie, you has been a continued concern of hers. This infection in her foot has went to the bone, and so we ask for healing. We ask for this antibiotic to work. We ask that uh, pain would be manageable, so I imagine it could be painful, so I ask for your healing for her. We thank you for Jody making it to her, but we ask that her pregnancy would go well and that you would just help her in this heat to stay comfortable. We love Hope Edwards to you and Guy the Spada, and I ask for continued healing for them. Lord, we lift up Jimmy to you. He's had back problems as long as I've known him, but now they've come to a point where he has to consider surgery. So I ask that you would give him wisdom and comfort in whatever situation, or whatever decision he makes, and that you would help him to have his pain be managed well. Also give him direction on uh, what kind of employment he should do next. We lift up also this LAC resident, Jeremiah Bowman, who's missing. I ask that he would be found and comfort his family and those that love him until he is found. Mike has liver issues, and I ask for healing for him. I lift up Nick to you, and I ask that you would heal his ankle, but also comfort his heart and give him encouragement. I lift up our VBS to you, and I thank you for these eight children that are signed up, and I ask that you would just bless that time. Bless us as, as we participate and uh, record things today, that technology will work for us. <laughs> and that we would, it would all go together well, and that the kids would have a good time but also learn about you. We lift up our church to you, that you would help us to sustain, be sustained during this pandemic. I also pray for all the churches and pastors and leaders in this area, that you would help them and give them wisdom. I lift up Terry to you as a nurse in, an, in Genesis, and that keep her safe. I lift up Aaron to you and I ask for healing for his kidneys and I ask that if he needs a transplant that it would be provided for him. I pray for Todd Hickman who's lost his memory after having a seizure and I ask that you would heal his brain and that he would be able to remember uh, the things that he has forgotten. I lift up Stephanie to you that's uh, been trying to get unemployment and I ask that you would provide for her in this time when there is not income coming in. I thank you for my friend Jen, my best friend, <laughs> that I'd ask you would give her encouragement as she's had a rough year, and I ask that you would just bless her today, especially on her birthday. I thank you for her and her friendship. I lift up Yvonne to you, and she asked for strength, so comfort her and strengthen her for whatever lies ahead for her. We thank you for George opening his eyes, but I'd ask for continued healing for his brain and for his body, and I'd ask that you would be with his wife and his family as they probably don't get to visit him as well. I lift up the Fogg family and the family of William Carter as they mourn, that you would comfort their hearts and that you would be with them as they are grieving this, the loss of their loved one. We lift up Betty to you who's found out that she needs knee surgery. I ask that you would help her uh, to remain calm about it and that you would also that her pain be manageable. It's a painful surgery, but it usually resolves a lot of the issues. So I ask that, that it would be an easy um, surgery for her. I looked up Valerie to you. She's a pastor colleague of mine that's starting a new appointment. Well, started a new appointment in July, and I'd ask for wisdom for her and for encouragement, and that you would just help her as new starts are not easy, and, and her circumstances are no different. I looked up Kenny to you and I asked for healing for his legs. I've had cellulitis, it's not fun. It can be painful and it's more annoying sometimes than painful, but I'd ask for healing for him. I lift up uh, Jenny as she's not been able to see her brother and she probably worries about him because she can't go in and see him. So I ask that you would be with all those that are in nursing homes, but especially her brother and comfort her heart that she can't see him. And all those unspoken requests that are on our hearts and minds, Lord, I lift them up to you. And I thank you for being here, part of our service, as we talk about unity. 
And hear us now as we pray the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn is one of actually Fairton's favorites. We're going to sing it through twice. Let there be peace on earth. historic creed of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, 
he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray over the offering this morning. Lord, we want to thank you that we can give back to our church, and so I ask that you would bless this offering and bless those that might give online, that you would uh, let it be used to the, your kingdom. Bless the gift, the giver, and those unable to give. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. You may be seated. Now, you may have noticed we were going to start a sermon series starting today, but this week I just... I don't know, I got really out of sorts in my spirit because I've been watching a little, reading too much on Facebook, I guess. And uh, I got a little discouraged. And one thing that God has really pointed out to me is we need unity today. It discourages me because we used to be able to disagree with each other and still sit down at the same table because we respected each other and we loved each other. And I don't know what happened, but we uh, don't do that quite as much. But as a church, we've got to do better. So we're going to talk about unity today. Because we're doing this together. Wynn Arn, a church consultant, surveyed members of a nearly 1,000 churches asking the question, why does the church exist? And of the members surveyed, 89% said the church's purpose is to take care of my family's needs and my family. And for many, the role of the pastor is to simply keep the sheep that are already in the pen together. Keep them happy and not lose too many of them. Only 11% said the purpose of the church is to win the world for Christ. But then the pastors were asked the same question. Why does the church exist? And the results were exactly the opposite. Of the pastors surveyed, 90% said the purpose was to win the world over to Jesus, and 10% said was to care for its members. Is it any wonder that we have conflict and confusion and inactivity in the church today? Nothing precedes purpose, and the starting point for every church should be the question, why do we exist? Until we know why we exist, we have no foundation, no motivation, no direction, and no unity. The early church knew why they existed. They were unified in purpose. Acts 4 says, Now the multitude of those who believed were one heart and soul. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of Jesus. And great grace was on all of them. Jesus had enlisted these followers not to a life of leisure, but to a life of service. While each had a different task, they all had the same calling to fulfill the Great Commission in their place and time. They had one leader, not the pastor, not the apostles, but Jesus, and one purpose, to communicate the gospel to all. These earliest disciples did more for the spread of Christianity than any generation since. So what was their secret? They had unity in the Church of God. All believers shared in this unity, not just the apostles, not just the leaders. All believers were unified. There was a fundamental solidarity of love and of purpose, to be one in heart and mind and unified in every fiber of their being. They were family in relationship. They shared the same spiritual father, God Almighty. They shared spiritual rebirth. They were born again into a family. A song from Bill and Gloria Gaither wrote, describes that family relationship. I'm so glad I'm part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain cleansed by his blood, joint heirs with Jesus as we travel the side, for I'm part of the family, the family of God. 
They were friends in fellowship. Not just family, because you know you're not always friends with all your family, right? They shared their lives and their possessions together with each other and went beyond a kind word or a pat on the back. They gave priority to meeting and practical needs were met. Chuck Swindoll wrote, churches need to be less like national shrines and more like bars, less like untouchable cathedrals and more like a well-used hospital, places to bleed rather than monuments to look at, places where you can let your hair down, places where you can have your wounds dressed. The early disciples found that in their community of faith. They were followers of Christ in partnership together. These men and women shared this enterprise together. They did not merely assemble for family gatherings or to make sure their physical needs were met. They came together in order to attain an objective. These men and women partners in reaching the world for Christ. They linked arms, not just for convenience and their comfort, and their support, but to reach out to those that weren't already linked. I read of a three-year-old girl that became lost in an open field where the weeds were waist high. Once her family realized she was missing, they frantically began to search for her, but to no avail. Finally, just before dusk, one of the children, dusk, one of the children in a group offered a suggestion. Let's join hands and walk across the field. Let's see if that helps. And because of their linking of arms together, they found the child. The members of a church are a group of people from various backgrounds, with different interests, different perspectives, who've been called together for one unified purpose. And that purpose is to cooperate together into reaching out beyond our walls so others can know the love of Christ. We're in the life-saving business, and that is accomplished best when we understand that we are a family of friends that are in partnership together. Unity matters to God. The Father does not want his kids to squabble. Disunity disturbs him. Why? In John 13, 35, it says, By this all people will know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Unity creates belief. How will the world know and believe that God sent Jesus? Not if we agree with each other, because we're not always going to agree. <laughs> not if we solve every controversy. Not if we're unanimous on all the votes. Not if we make doctrinal errors, but if we love each other. If unity creates belief, then disunity creates disbelief. So how can the world come to believe the gospel if those who already believe it are battling among themselves? When the world sees Catholics and Protestants dueling over power and territory in Northern Ireland, or young and old members of a same congregation arguing over worship styles, or a church splitting over the color of the carpet. And that has happened in some churches. Not here, if you feel like I'm stepping on your toes. Many people will say, thanks, but no thanks. And disunity is not merely a scandal for unbelievers. It's a stumbling block for them coming to faith. Paul Bilhammer may very well be right when he says that continuous and widespread fragmentation of the church has been the scandal of the ages. It's been Satan's master strategy. The sin of disunity probably has caused more souls to be lost than all other sins combined. Could it be that unity is the key to reaching the world? If unity is the key to fulfilling God's purpose of spreading the message of Jesus, shouldn't it have precedence in our prayers? If unity matters to God, then shouldn't it matter to us? If unity is a priority in heaven, shouldn't it be a priority here? Nowhere, by the way, we are told to build unity. We are just instructed to simply keep unity. 
From God's perspective, there is but one flock and one shepherd. Unity does not need to be created. It simply needs to be protected. So how do we do that? How do we make efforts to keep unity? Does it mean we compromise our convictions? No. Does it mean we abandon truths? No. Does it mean we look long and hard? But it does mean we have to look hard at the attitudes we have. It doesn't mean looking at everybody else and what they're doing, but ourselves, because unity begins with us. And it not demands that other people change, but admitting that no one, no one, including this one right here, is perfect. Unity grows as we learn to accept others' differences and to forgive others when wrong. There's a saying in recovery that that person's just sicker. There are people who are sicker than others. That's why I look at it, which is probably not nice, maybe you to think that way, but some people are just not as far along in the journey as we are. Unity continues as we humbly seek those and serve those who are different. Unity is fulfilled as we focus on who we believe rather than what we believe in. Unity is favored as we take the message of Jesus to a divided world. So that's our purpose, church. We've got to do better with it. Let's be unified in it. Let's pray. Lord, it is so much that tries to divide us these days. We're Republican or Democrat, conservative and liberal, and from dividing curriculum, maybe uh, fair. We're always divided some way with this world, but we can be unified in you. So I, I pray that that unity can be protected and promoted through us. Because in the world, a dying world needs to see that love and unity. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, if you are home watching us online, grab some juice and a cracker or bread or whatever you have that seems similar. And those out in the pews, get your old yummy wafers if you're... You gotta remember the uh, wafer is in the top part. Here, so you peel that. On the night in which God, when Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread. This yummy bread. Gave it, gave thanks to you. Broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Mm. I'm sorry. I apologize every time. That tastes like cardboard to me. But When the supper was over, get ready so you can wash it down. He took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would bless these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us a unifying body and blood of Christ. Will we be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Well, if you are home and you are wanting me to bring you communion, I can do that with a mask, and we can come have communion together this week. Just uh, email me, message me, something. Just let me know. I will bring it to you. Nasty way for an all. I'm glad it's a small, thin thing. It isn't too bad. All right, please stand for the benediction. Don't forget the communion offering in the back is to help us with the VBS. Um, now receive the benediction. The scripture from Romans 15. 
May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, according to Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify God our Father, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.